much for 100,000 follows. I cannot believe that we've come this far. When I put out my first little TikTok back in May of 2021, I never thought that just a little over a year later, we would have 100,000 people in this community. So thank you so much for following and I'm looking forward to the next year and all the wonderful things that we're gonna do together. Bye. If you're working on modifying your voice to better align with your gender presentation, something you've probably come across is the concept of pitch and resonance. And I know these two concepts can be kind of hard to disentangle, so I thought I would give you some examples today. So just to define those two things, pitch is a measure of relative highness or lowness of a note. So if I take a fundamental note, uh, I can make it higher or lower. Uh, but resonance is a measure of brightness or darkness of a fundamental note. So if I pick one note, uh, I could make that note brighter uh, or darker. Uh, so that is pitch uh, versus resonance. Uh, most people, when they're modifying the perceived gender of their voice, want to be working a lot on resonance. And that's going to be sometimes hard to do if you're unable to distinguish those two things because the brain can kind of hear like brightness and darkness as highness and lowness, which is totally normal. So an exercise I like to try if you're struggling to differentiate those two things is to isolate pitch by talking like a robot. So if you wanna work on the brightness of your voice, you can do so by just having one pitch only and trying to make it as dark or as bright as you can without changing the pitch at all. So we're taking one pitch, speaking monotonously or like a robot. So that can help you to isolate resonance so that the pitch is stable and you're only working on that one characteristic at a time. If you like this, there's so much more information just like this in my course, Trans Vocal Exploration. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering why there's this these 100K balloons behind me, it's because in my last TikTok, we celebrated the milestone of reaching 100,000 followers on TikTok, which is so wonderful. So I'm gonna, you know, leave those out for a little while because I just, I'm, I'm pretty proud. <laughs> I hope this helps. So if you're working on your voice and you watch my content, then you know that I believe warming up is one of the best things that you can do to prepare yourself for success. Uh, I know not a lot of people have a ton of time for warming up, so I created a lesson in my course, Trans Vocal Exploration, called the Quick Warm Up. And I thought I would share that lesson with you here today because it's less than two minutes. So stick around and do the quick warm up with me. Lastly, I wanted to add like a quick warm up because I recognize that people are busy. We have lives. Uh, it's hard to add new habits into our daily routines if they're really, really long and arduous. So if you have time to do a full, nice, introspective, leisurely warm up, great. If you only have five minutes, I also want you to have an option. So let's go over what you can do if you only have five minutes. So Step one, you're gonna do a little bit of a stretch. You're gonna stretch your arms, you're gonna roll your shoulders, you're gonna open your chest, arch your back, and you're going to stretch your neck from side to side and do a few neck rolls. Then I want you to do a nice big yawn. I want you to do a little bit of conscious breathing. A little check in with the posture, a little doggy breath. <laughs> And then just a few glisses. And if that's all you do, that is perfect. But remember, being consistent is more important than doing a really long warm up. So I would much prefer you just do five minutes every single morning, first thing you do when you wake up, rather than once a week doing a long and leisurely warm up. So pick whatever's gonna work for you. If you wanna do like this quick warm up five days a week and then twice a week you do a really long warm up while you listen to music or something, that's totally fine. Just make sure that the habits are consistent, that you're putting them in your calendar or putting a phone reminder on, that you know where and when in your space you're going to be doing that, or that you have somebody to help remind you. So maybe you can ask your friend or your partner or your parent or whatever to do it with you so that it's an activity that you do with somebody else and that you're accountable. So that's it, that's the whole warm up module. You've made it all the way to the end of module three. Congratulations. 
So not all of my students are taking lessons with me because they have really severe voice dysphoria. Some people take trans voice lessons because they want to create a voice that they can use when they're out and about, when they're around strangers, you know, mostly as a safety measure so that they can be gendered correctly when they're around people who don't know them that well. And I had a student explain it to me in the cutest way and I had to share it with you. She said to me, Renee, I want my voice to be like a bra. I want to be able to put it on in the morning have it support me throughout the day. And then when I get home, I'm around people I'm comfortable with, my family and friends, I can take it off and not think about it until the next day. And I just thought that was so cute. You know, this work, not everything has to be like changing the core or the essence of who we are. Sometimes it's about just having something we can put on when we need it. So I wanted to ask you, is this work about combating voice dysphoria, which is a fine reason to do this? Or is it about just having a tool that you can use when you're around strangers, which also might be about dysphoria, but maybe like a different flavor. So yeah, please let me know in the comments, what are the reasons that you're doing your trans voice work? Hello, trans voice friends. Today I want to talk about the concept of dynamic range. So dynamic range is a little hard to describe, but it's related to the characteristic of inflection, and it basically has to do with how much pitch variability there is when we inflect during speech. So this can be a gendered characteristic, although it is not for every language, every culture. So I'm really only speaking from my own perspective. So when we think about a feminine dynamic range, usually we consider that to be wider. So you can think like Disney princess. I just can't wait until I can find my prince. There's a lot of high, low, up, down, right? However, a masculine dynamic range would be more narrow. So that would be something like uh, Neo from The Matrix. I know Kung Fu. Now, if we took the dynamic range of those two examples and swap them, you'd be able to instantly hear how they affect the gendered presentation of those sentences. I just can't wait until I can find my prince. I know Kung Fu, right? So if you've never tried experimenting with your dynamic range, try that one today. One of the most powerful tools for creating a strong habit in your life is called environment design. This refers to designing your space to either include triggers that cue positive habits or remove triggers that cue bad habits. This can get really fun when you start connecting light, music, times of day, and particular areas of your space to the habit that you want to create. Let me show you how I use environment design in my life. So I run an online trans voice education business from my apartment in Montreal. I live and work mostly alone, and so I rely on my habits to keep everything running smoothly. I show up at my desk at the same time every day, roughly 9 a.m. I open up Kajabi where I host my courses and I get to work. I also play the same soundscape during my morning work. 24-7 lo-fi hip-hop radio beats to study slash relax by Mellow Beat Seeker paired with coffee shop noises by Coffitivity. I've been using this combination, 9 a.m. plus soundscape, for so long that I don't even have to think about it anymore. It's such a deeply ingrained habit in my life. The combination of that time and that sound just makes me want to work. So how can you use environment design to support your voice practice? The important thing is to pick environmental cues. So a time of day is usually strongest, especially if it relates to other habits that you already have established, like brushing your teeth. But the winning combination, in my opinion, is to combine a time of day with a particular spot in your space and a lighting cue or a sound cue. So this could mean every morning at 7 a.m. you sit on a pillow in the corner of your room and you play gong sounds while you warm up your voice. Or while you're making dinner, you imitate the voices that you hear on the 6 o'clock news. Or after you wash your face before bed, you turn on a colored light in your bathroom and do five exercises in front of the mirror. It can even be as simple as just sitting on one specific chair at your kitchen table. Like you have one chair where you eat and one chair is where you practice voice. But having those environmental cues is what will trigger your brain to want to practice. If you want to know more about how I use habits to run my business, Kajabi is hosting a free creator challenge where I and three other entrepreneurs will show you how we use Kajabi in the new creator economy. Check out the description and the link in my bio for more information. A question I get asked often is, can I masculinize my voice without taking testosterone? And the short answer is, 
Yes, that is my job. I literally teach people to do exactly that. However, if you're planning on taking testosterone someday, it doesn't hurt to learn some masculinization techniques beforehand. Some folks who take testosterone seek out voice masculinization lessons after their voice has changed because they need help learning to adapt to their new way of speaking. So how do we masculinize the voice? One way is to increase the amount of space in your vocal tract by dropping the larynx as in a yawn. Doing this creates a darker sound and can contribute to an overall more masculine voice. I hope this helps. This will probably not come as much of a surprise to you because I'm a very introspective person, but I love reflexive journaling in both my life and my voice practice. And it's something that I encourage my students to do all the time. If you've never tried reflexive journaling, all you have to do is respond to a prompt about your experience. So here are a few example prompts. The first one is, how can I be kinder and more compassionate toward myself in my voice practice? Another one is, how can I allow myself to be more vulnerable with the people in my life as I work towards my voice goals? And a third one is, how can I bring a sense of curiosity and play to my voice practice? Now, you don't need to use prompts when reflexive journaling. You can simply do your voice practice and then sit down and write about your experience and, and what was good and what was bad, and that really works for somebody. But if you're the kind of person who likes a journal prompt, I've created a, a little workbook that you can download. It's totally free. This workbook is geared towards people who are feminizing their voice, so there's one or two prompts in there that are specifically about that. But most of the prompts can be applied to any type of practice. And I'm thinking about making more of these like freebie journal prompt workbooks if that's something that you all are interested in. So if you would like me to make one that's specifically for non-binary people or for people who are masculinizing, let me know in the comments below. But if you do want to grab the workbook that I have available, you can do so at the link in my bio. I hope this helps. So you're interested in learning to raise or lower the baseline pitch of your voice, but how much and where do you even start? Pitch is an interesting characteristic because while most people have an average pitch around which they speak, some people use a wide variety of pitches and others don't. This is something we looked at in the video on dynamic range that I posted a few days ago. On top of that, average pitch as a sex determined characteristic is distributed bimodally, which means there are two bell curves that overlap. There may be general average pitch ranges where the majority of cis men and cis women sit, but there's tons of overlap and there are people of all genders all over the pitch distribution. So what does this mean for you? Should you raise or lower your pitch? I say give it a go. The process of raising or lowering your pitch will definitely give you at the very least very valuable information about your instrument. And you might find that other characteristics such as resonance and vocal fold mass are easier to manipulate or can be modified differently at different pitch values. Later this week, I'll post an exercise for determining your baseline pitch, so stick around for that. So earlier this week, we talked about raising or lowering pitch. And today, I'm going to give you an exercise for determining your baseline pitch so that you can get a sense of where you need to go when you're raising and lowering it. So for this exercise, you're going to need a tuner. There are plenty of online options. The one I like is at tuner.ninja, and I think they also have a mobile app. So all you're going to say for this exercise is, I like pie. Now, you can try saying it in a few different ways. I like pie. If you say it's sad, it'll be lower. If you say it excited, it'll be higher. I like pie. But I want you to try saying it in like an average way as much as possible. I like pie. I like pie. I like pie. And if, you, if I hold this up while I do this, you'll see there's a lot of different pitches that come up. So let me just get this focused. I like pie. I like pie. Right, it's changing a lot. But if I hold one note, if I just hold the P of pi, you can kind of get a sense of like a middle average pitch for yourself. So let me just try this here. There we go. I like pi. Okay, so like between A3 and B flat. I like pi. I like pi. So that makes sense for me. I do this exercise a lot and I'm usually like A3, B flat 3. Now if I wanted to lower it, most people when they're lowering pitch or raising pitch, they go way too low or way too high. We can really get an effective use of raising or lowering pitch by doing a very, very small amount. So instead of pi, we might want to end up on 
pa. I like pa. And that gives me G3. Pi, right? And already that sounds like a lot more masculine. And I only went down by one tone. I like pi. And then to go up, I like pi. I like pa. So that's C4. So that's like a, a tone or, yeah, about a tone higher than I was before. So this exercise is really good. It shows you that you don't need to move very far to get a lot of good juice from raising or lowering your pitch. So if you do this exercise, let me know how it goes in the comments. I hope this helped. Hello, my trans voice pals. It is December 22nd and I'm going to take a little break for the holidays. So you won't see any content from me until January 9th. But in the meantime, here are some of the best outtakes from this year's TikToks. Enjoy. Okay, I spent several minutes relaxing and I've made a deal with myself that if I get through these TikToks, I get to go to the hardware store. So we're filming now. Can you cut that in somewhere funny? Like, mm. <clears throat> uh, uh, ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, ah, no. Okay, one more time. However, oh, I might have, I think I peaked the microphone. Then other organization is at, I hit the microphone again. It is trans, whoops, let's do that again. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Renee and I'm a gender. Oh, this is gonna get me canceled. Mm. Keeping it short, keeping it pithy. Woo! I can't think of a last one. Ready? And lastly, gaming. Gaming. MMORPGs, gaming, audio, <laughs> gaming. I really don't know how to talk about this. Okay, one more time. So this can be a, a gaming. Really popular there are. It's like a holy f gaming. I'm not a gamer. Help me, Tegan. Gaming. It's a popular place to practice the target voice because gaming. Using an avatar. Do you have any suggestions? Gaming. gaming. Leave them in the comments below. It's touch and go there for a minute. <laughs>